Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Armed and Ready podcast. I am your host, Jason Wood, the VA loan guy. And today we have a really cool episode. I have two Army veterans on the show today that are jumpers, and they're going to talk about what they're doing today to help people still stay certified and get certified to jump and the nonprofits that they are part of. Gents, I'm super excited to have you with us um, and just share your stories. You guys do some pretty exciting stuff that's not your regular run-of-the-mill type thing. So um, let's talk. Let's get to know what you guys are up to and, and a little bit about your story. Um, Ken, I'll start with you, man. Um, tell us a little bit about you know, your military journey. What was, what was the trigger to make you even join the military and let alone get you to, to where you're at today? Uh, Jason, uh, I joined the military in... Uh... I, I, uh, March of 1988, uh, right. I graduated high school and, uh, I went on the early entry program, went in, uh, started basic training in August of, uh, August 4th, actually 1988. And, uh, I initially was going in, uh, on the old GI bill that she had to pay into because, uh, that was, I didn't come from a wealthy family or, or, or family of means where they could afford to put me through college. So. That was my that was my way of paying for college. Uh, I was initially just going to go in, uh, do my first uh, first enlistment, get out and go to college. So it didn't work out that way. It just turned into it morphed into a whole career. How long did you serve for? I was medically retired in 2014, uh, and, and and I would have I I, te- I possibly could, would even be still in today, but I was forced to medically retire due to combat injuries from Afghanistan. But uh, so if you 88 to 2014, it's like uh, 25 years. So what was your, what was your job in the military? What did you do? When I first went in, I was a combat medic. Okay. Um, and then I transitioned to, uh, I had a kind of a weird career. It was just, it's weird how I transitioned. A lot of people will just go in, be one MOS and, and, and stay with their whole career. I, I went in as a combat medic, transitioned over to military police. Transitioned over to uh, Signal, um, and uh, had the opportunity to put in a packet. Went to went to warrant officer school, became a warrant officer, and retired as a Signal warrant officer. And um, Dave, tell us a little bit about about your story. How how did you get into the military? What was kind of that decision making point for you? Pretty much the same thing, except uh, I guess uh, uh, I always wanted to be a soldier. Uh, <laughs> Uh, must have must have happened in my mom's belly uh, uh, pretty much the same time too as as, uh, as Ken. Uh, I also went on delayed entry. I'm a little bit younger than Ken. Um, so I went in very young uh, with my mom's signature. Um, ended up going in at the right time because uh, Panama had just happened. Uh, Desert Storm had just happened. So I pretty much caught all the wars that uh, that were happening at the time and um it, it went on from there and um it uh, grew me up quick if you will um yeah it, uh, I, I lost my first uh, my first buddy uh, he was actually my roommate um oh man uh, pete swano um i i, I don't uh, i don't recall a whole bunch of things. Uh, I don't know whether it's selective memory, or uh, you know, you just block things out as you as you progress in life from traumatic experiences. But uh, uh, the one thing I, I do remember from the military is that uh, you know you you don't forget uh, the faces of of the guys that you hang with and that you're with, but uh, you may forget their names, but never never you know, the faces. Right. Uh, it was just uh, an awesome experience. Yeah, how long were you in? Uh, All together, twenty-one years. Twenty-one. What was your MOS? Uh, I started out as uh, infantry, and then I volunteered for special forces. I went to selection. Uh, I was trained uh, down in uh, uh, Panama before I before I left, but I ended up getting out and went into the National Guard. Interesting, like that you mentioned, you always wanted to be a soldier. I, I kind of recall same same for me. Like, just always wanted to be in the military. You know, everything I, I kind of was uh, drawn towards was always military related, whether it was toys as a kid or, you know, things I was doing as I was growing up. Um, so I share that same like 
desire that you did to always serve, um, which is pretty cool. So you, what are you guys up to now? I know um, we have, you know, a friend in common, CJ Machado, who um, got us um, connected here. But tell us a little bit about, you know, what you guys are up to today. We're, we're basically just trying to, uh, to pay it forward. Uh, W&R Vets, with, um, you know, as, as you go through life, you, uh, you, you pick up things and uh, you want to do things. Well, we're, we're, uh, we're a little bit different. Um, we don't want to pick up things. We actually just want to, want to pay back uh, pretty much everything. And we have a lot of friends that help us with that. Um, we've, uh, we've gotten into a, a, basically an organization, RCPT USA, uh, and they've just done some, some amazing things with, with jumpers. So um, with WNR Vets, we've been doing a whole bunch of things um, that uh, help veterans all along. But in, in cooperation with RCPT, we uh, were able to just help veterans kind of get back to better, if you will. Um, if you didn't jump in the Army because you, you couldn't get an airborne slot, et cetera. I mean, who, who goes into the Army and doesn't want to go airborne? Very few. Um, we can actually help you get through that. Uh, we'll find a sponsor. We can help you get some money for that. And if not, RCPT can actually find some sponsors sometimes. Um, well, this, this particular thing that we're doing um, is actually honoring one of those that went before us, kind of started the whole thing, if you will. Uh, an original, an original Tacoa guy, uh, Jim Pee Wee Martin. He's, uh, he's a two star combat jump veteran, uh, jumped into D Day. Uh, right out of uh, St. Marie de Verville. Um, he jumped into Market Garden um, in Holland. Uh, he also fought in the Battle of the Bulge, as well as various smaller battles. But, I mean, those are the big ones that people will know. Right. And he's turning 100 this year. 100. I mean, went through all that, and he's turning 100. So um, as part of our uh, American revival, if you will, this, uh, this, this year, we're, uh, we're starting with him. And we're going to honor those that went before because uh, Jim has done so much. His generation has done so much. And he just happens to be one of our biggest heroes. Do you guys teach people how to like static jump or are you teaching people how to jump out of airplanes? We have a partnership with Palaka um, down in Florida and uh, RCPT itself. We, we teach them how to static line jump for okay. basically army standards. Um, We'll, we'll teach them how to static line using a, uh, an actual uh, steerable parachute, the SF-10. Um, it's uh, a round canopy, but uh, you can actually steer the chute somewhere. Um, with Skydive Palaka, if they choose to, they can actually then go on to the AFS, which is the, acceler the accelerated free fall. So there, there's a symbiotic relationship there. Not only do we use uh, Skydive Palaka through Art Schaefer, um, who's just wonderful to us. Um, it was his drop zone to do the static line course. We then, again, those crossovers that want to, um, will set the sky and I pull up and have them go through the free fall course. Are you guys both like training and teaching? Are you guys both jumping? Like, um, what is your, what is your involvement with it? RCPT, the round canopy parachute team, um, it's comprised of, of veterans and even civilians, uh, mostly veterans, but uh, civilians off the street can come in and they can go through our jump course and they can they can learn. It's all it's trained by former and current active duty uh, jump masters, uh, and it's trained to standard. Uh, um, so you're going to get all the same instruction as if you were going to Fort Benning and going to jump school. Um, and <clears throat> uh, and how are Myself and Dave, uh, we're actually both board members with RCPT. I'm the team historian. Dave's a sergeant at arms. Um, and then also with WNR Vets, w, uh, with WNR Vets, Dave is president, and then I'm I'm board member advisor with WNR Vets also. And um, and me me and Dave actually met through RCPT, and uh, you know, and we're really close friends now, and, and we we work well together and doing different events. Uh, so, like you mentioned with uh, with Pee Wee, um, uh, how uh, how we were able to get the relationship with Pee Wee was actually kind of a and I'll, I'll touch on it real quick. But I was doing a I'm, I'm also an author. I have a, a book called America, and I'm, I'm not trying to 
push out my own stuff. But I was doing a book signing up in Tacoa, Georgia. Um, and uh, Pee Wee's son, Roger, came up to the table uh, to where I was signing books. And, uh, and, and he, you know, and I looked up and I was just like, and I, I told him, I said, wow, you look like a younger version of Pee Wee Martin. And, and he's like, well, that's my dad. <laughs> and uh and and I was like, well, there, there you go. And uh we 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 formed a quick friendship. Um and he mentioned, hey, you know, I I've always I've always wanted to experience what it is that my dad did in World War II, jumping out of planes. And I'm like, well, you're talking to the right guy, we can make that happen. And uh I literally made a quick phone call that night and uh and set it up with uh, uh Bill Markham as the president of, of Round Cancer. I set it up with him and Art Schaefer. Uh, who who owns the drop zone there, Scott at Palacca, where we're we're based out of in Palacca, Florida, and we set it up to where uh, where we, we we would be able to train uh, Roger to jump out of the plane. Well, um, about a week or two later, I'm on the phone with with Roger, and, he, and he's chopping wood or something outside. I'm like, "What are you doing?" He goes, "Well, I'm chopping wood for my dad," and uh, I'm like, "Oh, okay." And uh, he goes, "Yeah," he goes, my, "That's how my dad heats his home," and I'm like. I said, he heats his home with what? And, and he goes, well, the furnace hasn't worked for 20 years. He goes, so he, he heats his home from a fireplace. And I didn't say anything to him there, but I I, uh, I called up Dave. And I'm like, Dave, do you know that Pee Wee has not had heat in his house for 20 years? Huh. And you're like, and so long story short, we did a fundraiser. And in one week, we raised, what was it, twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000, Dave? Yep. And we completely replaced Pee Wee's furnace in his house and to where he has good ambient heat that keeps him warm. He lives in Ohio, so it gets cold there. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And uh, um, and that was from people all over the world. And that was from donations from everybody around the world. Well, from doing that, we, we got Jim to agree to come down to our event that we just hosted in October. Um, Twice a year, we have events. Uh, in October, we have Operation Black Cat. And in March, we have Operation Sand Snake. And all we do each year, we just add a Roman numeral onto it. So, like, here in March, we're going to have uh, Sand Snake 5. Um, and, uh, but in October, we had uh, Black Cat 4. And we had a UH-1 Vietnam era Huey. And we got Jim to come down. We, we trained Roger. Uh, we did a... a uh, Pee Wee did a tandem out of the Huey with uh, with uh, um, Mark Schaefer, and um, and then we also did uh, round canopy jumps from the Huey uh, with Roger, and, and, and um, yeah, it was a great event, and it was it was a really it was a blast, and it was one of our biggest events we've ever had, um, just due to a chance meeting at a book signing in Tacoa, uh, you know, two years ago. What a crazy coincidence. That's, that's really cool how it led up to that. Um, so you guys are planning on doing a celebration for his birthday, right? In doing a jump with him or having him do a jump, I, I guess. We've yes. asked them, uh, we've to asked them uh, not pressure any of the World War II veterans to, to jump and do tandems. Uh, it's strictly going to be, you know, uh, at their own volition. And of course, not to... Uh, not to put anybody in danger, you know, of, of, uh, with, with the COVID restrictions, et cetera. Um, but uh, should one of them ask, of course, we'll, we'll do it. It's just, uh, it's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis. Gotcha. Um, Pee Wee jumped. Uh, he does love it. I know he does love it. But uh, no, I, I doubt we'll have any World War II veterans. Uh, in April, uh, the temperatures do get a bit nippy, um, especially at altitude. Uh, so, yeah, I, I doubt we'll have any World War II veterans doing it, but uh, we will have a lot of the family members of the World War II veterans doing it. So it, uh, it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. In, a, in, a, in a C-47, to do a, to do a free-fall tandem jump, you have to get to an altitude of 7,500 feet. So if the, if the weather on the ground, let's just say the weather on the ground is 60, 65, the weather at 7,500 degrees, you, you, you just, you're just going to go down to like 25, 30 degrees. And we can't have 98, 100-year-old uh, veterans up in that kind of, uh, you know, it's just, it's just too frigid for them uh, at that, yeah. at that uh, altitude. Yeah. yeah, but they're crazy enough to do it. Right. Well, especially going without heat for 20 years, he, 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 he might be used to it. 
Jim is tough. Let me tell you, his his mind in his mind, he's 20 years old. Uh, and, and he'll tell you the only time I ever feel old is when I look in the mirror. Um, and and I I ever uh, ever since uh, ever since we got through the heater process and and whatnot, um, I talk to him on the phone at least once a week. And uh, he's just he's so intelligent and so smart and so. Uh, well versed when he when he speaks, and I mean you can ask him questions, uh, and and he's really he's really cool. Uh, I mean in the fact that he'll he, he's like I'll answer any question that you want to know. Uh, there's only been one question that I've ever asked him that he kind of he kind of got a little uh, emotional, uh, and and that could be another story another time. But uh, other than that, he's uh, he he's just as smart as they come, and and the only thing is just you know he's getting ready to turn a hundred, so. That's the only thing, but he still walks without a cane. He he he, he lives at home by himself. Uh, drives his car. You know, just does everything that we do. Just you know, just takes a little bit longer because of his age. But, uh, wow, that's um, impressive. Yeah, and in in April, April this past year, um, he turned ninety nine, and and I don't know. So I just get these ideas sometimes. I was like, and I know that the drop zone where he where there's a drop zone ten minutes from his house. <clears throat> It's a uh, skydive Green County, and he jumped there with two of his sons back in '83 on the anniversary of D Day back in 1983, June 6. And uh, I was up in Ohio uh, right after the the heater was installed, and I'm in his living room. I look up on the wall and I see the picture of him and his sons where they had jumped, you know. And I asked him, I said, Jim, can I take the sign, the picture down real quick? He's like, Yeah. And uh, and it was just a small little picture of him and him and his sons uh, where they did that back in '83, and uh, and then ten years ago he did a tandem jump at that same drop zone. Uh, and there's a video of it out on YouTube uh, where where he was down there with his whole family and did and did his first tandem. Um, but I got the idea. I was like, you know what? Let me call the drop zone there and see if they would be interested in in hosting a a hundredth birthday party uh, for him. And I called down to uh, the drop zone there. Um, uh, Kelly West, who is the owner of, uh, of Stoddack Green County, got her on the phone and she's like, oh my God, absolutely. And uh, we would love to do that. And then my next phone call, of course, is to my friend Dave Krasner. And Dave uh, Dave is the one where I'll, I'll have an idea for something and then Dave will will take it from, I'll have an idea like it's just going to be like a, a kind of a cool get together. And Dave will, uh, Dave, is just has that magical ability to turn it into a full blown, uh, you know, event that just will knock your socks off and everybody wants to be a part of it. I'm interested to know a little bit about, about jumping. So I got to imagine there's some, some fun stories you guys have with just teaching people that are totally green to the whole thing and maybe get a wild hair and say, yeah, I want to do that. And, um, so I'm interested to hear from you guys, you know, just any stories or experiences you had with, with some newbies. I mean, I, I think of it like if I were to, to volunteer to go do that, I'd probably be all gung ho till I got up there and then, you know, start to chicken out a little bit. But you know, what, what stories can you guys share with us or experiences you had with, you know, just getting green, green people up there and doing it for the first time? Well, it's actually a uh, pretty cool, uh, you know, it, it, again, it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. You either go or you don't, we're not going to force you out of the aircraft, <clears throat> but, uh, uh, generally guys go because you want to be there for a purpose. And, and, uh, we, we train you to the extent that you're, by the time you're up in the plane, you're ready to go. I mean, you really are. You, you're so gung ho about it. You, you've been through everything safely. Um, you, you've been through, uh, the harness training, which by, by the time you're in the harness, you want to get out of the harness. Trust me. Um, you're just so ready to get in that plane and get in a parachute. But one of the funniest ones was Mikey Fahey from Gruntstadt. Uh, I'll, let, yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll let Ken. I'll let Ken tell you because that was that was just too funny. Go ahead, Ken. Yeah, so if, if you're uh, if, 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 for those of you who know who Mikey Fahey is with Grunt Style, uh, uh, he's retired uh, Marine uh, E6. Uh, just a great guy, funny, uh, just a lot of fun to be around and. The gung ho, uh, just your, 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 what you imagine a Marine would be. Um, and, uh, so we, we train, we train Mikey, uh, and, and we, we train the rest of the grunt style guys too. But Mikey, 
out of all of them, Mikey is the one that embraced it the most. Um, and uh, he, uh, we had we had this one particular jump with him. Now we have a pretty good sized drop zone to where, uh, it, but there are trees way off in the far distance. But you know, um, I will tell you, it, for for guys that are new coming out of the plane. You can you can put them through. You can tell them everything to do. You know, okay, you know, you know, steer. You know, steer yourself into the wind. Blah, blah, do this. And, you know, you know, keep your body position right. Blah, 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 and then all that will go out the window because now they're at a thousand feet and they're looking around and they can see for twenty miles around. And it's just like it, you, they, what happens is kind of like a deer in a headlight. It's like, oh my god, this is cool. And they, they start looking around and they don't realize that hey, you 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 are falling. You are coming down quick because when you come out of the plane at generally 1500 feet, you know, by the time your chute opens, boom, you're now at about 1300 to 1200 to 1300 feet and you are, you are coming down quick. So you, you, you have to work. You gotta, you know, these are steerable parachutes and you gotta, you gotta be paying attention to what you're doing. Well, I know what happened in, in this case. Mike came out the plane and it was a beautiful day and he spent a little, little bit too much time enjoying the scenery and didn't realize that the wind was, was carrying him towards the tree. <laughs> by the time that he, by the time that he got it to, to turn his, it was too late. Then, then our training kicked in and it was like, uh, when you're going into the trees, if you can turn and go into the trees with your back to the trees, not, not facing forward. That way your, your pack tray and stuff like that will, We'll we'll take the brunt of you know, that we don't get scratched up and stuff like that. Well, this guy this guy has a four leaf clover right up his fourth point of contact because he literally went into the trees, came all the way down, landed on the ground, and we were able to recover the shoot and everything. There wasn't a scratch on the shoot; it didn't damage the shoot at all. And uh, and and he walked right out just like as if he landed in the drop zone with no trees around. It was it was hilarious. <laughs> that's really funny um so what um what what's next for for you guys with um with jumping in in the school and stuff like that or i guess before we get into what's next like how long how long is the training if someone says they want to get certified to do this um how long are they in training with you guys we don't take a bunch of guys the most we'll take is around 22 to 23 and our our proportion of, of Padre to student is very low. Uh, so we, we or, or I should say very high. Uh, we have a lot of trainers to, to the amount of students that we have. So we're able to work individually, with two or three guys. Uh, that being said, we're able to turn them around in, in two days. Um, but it's, it's a very hard two days. Um, so really, you're in the plane on the third day. Wow. Jump but- it's two days. It's two days for guys who, who who had already previously went and been trained through Benning. It's really about three days for guys who are who have never jumped out of a plane. Um, and when Dave says twenty two, that's a combination. That's a combination of uh, we we split it up between new guys. Uh, we don't take any more than fifteen brand new guys who have never jumped, and we don't and and we generally don't take any more than. Uh, 10 to 15, um, what we call yeah. um, extended airborne refresher. And what, what that is, is you'll have guys who, who, who were trained through Benning, but they might not have jumped for, you know, uh, for five years, 10 years. And you, you have to come back and it's just, it's, it's like riding a bike, but not as easy as riding a bike, but you have to, in order to, to be, it's the same thing in the army. So like if, if you go and you go to jump school and then you go to a different unit and then you go back to an airborne unit, they're going to send you through an airborne refresher course so that you can, um, so that you can be back on status again. Well, it's just kind of the same thing. So, but the amount of cadre that we have that are focused on the brand new guys, it's, it's almost one-to-one. Um, so, so that way, you know, uh, we can get the guys trained in two to three days and have them jumping versus three weeks at jump school where there you'll, you'll have a class at jump school of 200 people. We have, we have, you know, anywhere from, from 15 to, to 20 at a time during an event. Gotcha. Now that makes sense to have the refresher. How often do you guys um, offer the course throughout the year? 
twice a year. Uh, we we do. There are there are special circumstances where, and Dave, correct me if I'm wrong. There are special circumstances where um, where we can set it up to where they can come down uh, during uh, where we're not having an event go on, and um, especially for the refresher portion, guys who have already been airborne trained, we can have them come down because we have like myself. Uh, I don't do any of the training because um, I'm not a jump master. Uh, um, but uh, our president, Bill Markham, and a few other guys live, we all live in the area where we're close to Palaka. And so if we have somebody uh, on an off weekend where, where we're going to be there, um, we, can, we can do a train. We can do a, a one-on-one training class with them and get them in the air and, and jump. Uh, yeah, you just got to call and set it up got to be called it has to be yeah set up and called but normally we we focus on the events which are in march and in october and that's where that's where we focus because that's where we have the the bulk of our jump masters uh, coming for the events so i gotta ask you guys um being vets and everything else and, and in my line of work you guys used your va loan yet to buy a house or how many times have you used it right. i've used it a couple of times hoorah I've owned 13 homes in the last 30 years. Uh, I've used the VA loan three out of those 13 times. What advice would you guys share with, um, you know, some, some active duty folk who are, you know, either, you know, maybe wanting to get into airborne school or just maybe some, some advice for those that, you know, are considering making the military a career? Um, Anything you would share with them? Right now is a, a tumultuous time for everyone, uh, no matter what your political affiliation is. My, my advice is um, the world is, you know, it, it's ever changing and it's cyclical. Um, my advice would be to stay in. Uh, the, the military has so much to offer. Uh, you just got to choose your passion, uh, your job, stick with it. Uh, for airborne, keep trying. Don't ever give up. Um, if you want more than that, keep trying, don't ever give up. Uh, and that's really the mantra for, for somebody that wants to do that because, uh, that's where it all starts. How was your guys' transition out of active duty? Uh, I didn't want to get out. So it was, um, it was hard for me. Um, but, um, uh, going into the, uh, the civilian, the civilian side, I ended up becoming a Boston firefighter. So it was uh, from duty to duty. Yeah, well, that's um, great. It, it made it a little less hard, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it was all right. It was all right. Um, but I still long to be where where I came from. Uh, but I guess RCPT and, and and jump teams like this help that. And giving back to uh, to veterans that. I was forced into the uh, into the med board process due to due to combat related injuries uh, that just got worse. Not so much that I technically couldn't do my job, but it, it precludes you from being able to go to combat because when you're in the military, when you're in the military, the whole reason why you're in the military is so that you can go defend your country. And and my injuries and because of my job and what it is I did, they were basically get to the point to where they would preclude me from being uh, deployable. And uh, so um, that forced me into the med board process. And, uh, and I went through a pretty deep depression because, you know, my whole life I'd been in the military my whole life and, and I worked so hard and, and I'll be honest with you. I, you know, I, uh, especially when I became a warrant officer, that just changed my whole outlook on the military. Uh, I, I, I was at a point to where I was almost ready to get out and, and I put a warrant officer packet in, got approved, went to warrant officer school. And then the whole, it just, the whole, my whole outlook on being in the military completely changed uh, because it's like, I can't, ex, I can't explain it, but it just, it, for me, it was such a, a, a life changing event, switch, becoming a warrant officer and, and doing what, you know, I was a signal, uh, I held three at the time that I retired. I held three of the four signal warrant officer MOSs, and uh, um, and when you go from being that go-to guy that that colonels and generals come in and and talk to you, and then enlisted and NCOs come to, 
and they're and they're the ones coming to you because you're the one that can answer the questions and, uh, and then going to well it's all going to get rid it's all going away uh it, it was hard for me because i'm like what the hell am i going to do you know and and i yeah. and i lingered in the med board like i can't go out I, I don't know how i could go out and actually work for somebody when i when i get out of the military um, while I was in the med board process, I came up with the idea for roundcanopy.com. Uh, not to be confused with our nonprofit round canopy parachute team. I, uh, while I was in the med board, I created uh, round canopy LLC, roundcanopy.com. And that's my company that I own. And I, we make uh, uh, military themed metal art signs. And we specialize in airborne special operations, but we also make metal art signs for all branches of the military. Um, I started in the med board process. I started with 10 signs and, and now we're close to a thousand different designs that we make ship out to oh, that's the cool. whole world. So, so that's, that's how I transitioned. And, and that, and while I was in the med board process, I also, um, Bill Markham, who is our president, he was in the med board process, and uh, and and we and we had worked together also. Um, and he he basically him and another uh, him and another individual uh, were the ones that got me to to uh, to come over and join the team. And and it was a it, it was a kind of a baby steps approach where I just joined the team and I was a jumper, and then. And then got more and more enthused about what the mission was and what it was we were doing, and to the point to where I took on the role of the team historian. Um, I have an airborne book that I that I wrote, and and other things like that. And that's what has helped keep me busy and keep my mind right, uh, you know. And then and it, it it's just a natural progression. And then, like I said, I met Dave. We, it's funny how me and Dave met. Uh, I'll let Dave tell the story how we really met on the team. It was through, it was through a mutual friend who got injured on the drop zone. Um, but our our friendship just blossomed from there, and 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 to where now we together we we were setting up these these events, and especially this one we're working on now. And we really do want to talk a little bit more about the event, but I would let you know. To answer your question, um, that from from I, I retired from the med board in 2014, and now we're in 2021, and it's come full circle. And I was at a point to where I was I, I was teetering on the brink of of disaster. Uh, that's the best way I can put it. And the only thing that saved me from doing that was I couldn't I I, I didn't want to put my wife through the the agony of me making a bad decision. Um, and uh, that was the only thing that saved me from making a bad decision. Um, wow. But everything that I do now just helps along that way. And 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 I know it's the same for Dave. But uh, I would love for Dave to tell how we kind of came together with the team, and and then how it has morphed into what it is we do now. Uh, just uh, one of my buddies that uh, I served with, and. Uh, a little place called Ashraf, one of those wars that we caught. Um, he uh, he decided to uh, to come down and, and jump with us. Um, on his sixth jump, caught a little bit of wind, um, ended up uh, hitting a berm, uh, a little bit of a hill, and uh, ended up dislocating his hip and breaking his femur. Uh, Ken was the first one to get to him. Uh, I was the second. And we called for a medic, and uh, me and Ken stayed with him, and uh, our relationship out and blossomed from there. That was pretty much it. That's cool, man. It's it's cool to hear your guys' friendship and how it developed, and in what you guys are doing with it now. So let's um let's hear about the event a little bit. Tell us a little bit more about the event coming up. Yeah, so this this is really cool. Um, one, we have of course Jim Huey Martin, um, an original to Cohen, uh, or I should say a Tacoma original. Um, him, uh, we're going to have some some um, some guests of his as well, which are going to be uh, Tom Rice, uh, Dan McBride, who we've already confirmed, and, and Vince Speranza, also World War II Airborne veterans. Um, we're going to have two, possibly five altogether, 
C-47s out there, but two have confirmed. Uh, wow. That's Old Brother, which was the lead C-47 for the main airborne inv invasion force. Um, but of those of those C-47s, we're basically going to have some jumps on Friday and then a main mass jump on Saturday for all the World War II veterans basically to see. And of course, some free falls with candidates, et cetera. We're also going to open it up to the public so the public can come and uh, see their hero as well uh, in Ohio, because uh, everybody in Ohio loves, loves Jim, including the governor, who I understand is a good friend of Jim. Um, we're going to have uh, military vehicles there um, from uh, Canadian First Para, uh, which is a reenactment group. Um, we're going to have uh, some, some dignitaries, some VIP guests. Uh, we're going to have food, uh, some food trucks there. Um, definitely a, a whole bunch of teams. Uh, RCPT is going to be hosting the event, which uh, will control the operations of, uh, of course, the, the jumps, etc. cetera. Um, and we're going to have a huge leaderboard that is basically going to show the, the top uh, donations and, and uh, um, people who have sponsored our event for everyone to see. Uh, we're also going to have media coverage as well. Uh, we know uh, NBC Nightly News, I believe, has already signed on. Uh, Only Magazine and a few others. One one important thing um, on this uh, too is that to put a punk, to put an event on like this, <clears throat> it requires donations, and because you know we're nonprofits, uh, you know, and when I say we, um, I'm referring to WNR Vets and RCPPUSA.org. Uh, WNR Vets. Is the one sponsoring the uh, the event. So so basically, WR Vets is the one paying all the bills. And in order to in order to pay those bills, we we need you know we need donations. And yeah, this is a once in a lifetime event because Jim is only going to turn a hundred once. <clears throat> right. Yeah. And 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 I want Jim to be with us, you know, for years and years to come. But you know. You have to look at the reality of the, of the fact that uh, you know this probably be one of the last times we'll be able to ever to ever honor true World War II veterans. I mean, Jim, I mean, you've heard Dave say it a couple of times. A Tacoa original. Okay, many people outside of the airborne world have no idea what a Tacoa original means. A Tacoa original <clears throat> is a World War II paratrooper that trained at. Camp Tacoa in Tacoa, Georgia, from 42 to 43. Um, after 43, all training was shifted over to um, Fort Bragg and, and Fort Benning uh, for paratroopers. But those were the magic years because th that they were first generation U.S. Army paratroopers, and they all trained there at Tacoa. So that's why they referred to as the Tacoa Original. Got it. Okay, Jim. Jim was a Tacoa original. Tom Rice was a Tacoa original. Dan McGride, Dan McGride was a Tacoa original. Vince Speranza, who's coming, uh, he was a replacement, um, but uh, but he 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 didn't have any combat jumps in World War II, but he did fight in the uh, in the Battle of the Bulge in Bastogne. Um, the rest, uh, the other the other three uh, veterans that are going to be uh, Jim Jim. Uh, uh, Dan, uh, Tom Rice and Dan McBride both jumped into D-Day and Operation Market Garden two months later. Um, so, so that they they had the, the those were the best of their. This event is going to be one of really the last times that you're going to be able to honor paratroopers from the first generation of what it is that we do. So, um, and like Dave said, we're going to have uh, that's all brother the C. The C-47, that was the lead aircraft on D-Day. That was the first plane to drop troops into Normandy on June 6, 1944. And that plane is still flying and still dropping troops, uh, still drop doing uh, doing jumps today. And uh, wow, so that's cool. anybody who anybody who is airborne absolutely wants it in their jump log that they've jumped out of that's all brother. Um, and then anybody who's airborne and it has free fall uh, um, ratings, especially is going to want to have it in their jump logs that they that they could do both jumps. Uh, I'm excited because because and me and Dave we're both we're, we're both uh, static line and free fall rated. So the fact that we're going to be able to do both types of jumps out of the plane is just 
it's mind blowing for guys like us. Um, <laughs> but, but back to the, you know, it, it costs a lot of money to put these events on. And, um, so, uh, the big, the big emphasis is, is whether, whether you can donate a dollar, $5, $10 or, you know, or more, you know, will we ask that you go out and, and donate because, uh, um, you know, it costs money to get these planes here. Uh, you know, just to get one plane there is, is a minimum $10,000, you know, and we're looking at right now we have three planes, which is that's all brother. D-Day doll and um, possibly you know, placid, possibly, possibly placid, placid lassie. Lassie. all three were all junk planes on D-Day. Wow. Um, and we may have two, you know, we, you know, we definitely have the two, we may have three more. So when you're talking about having five planes there, you know, it, it costs, costs a lot of money to yeah. just in the planes alone. Where can, um, where can people go to get information on the event? And I imagine the same place they could also donate to, right? Yeah, it's going to be uh, W and R Vets. So W A N D R V E T S dot org will be one place. Uh, we should have everything on there very soon. I just talked to the uh, the web designer uh, this morning um, uh, for for donations. Uh, if if the podcast comes out before we have that done, uh, it it would be uh, PayPal dot M E forward slash um, WNR vets. That's it. That's just the keyword. Okay. Um, there's also a Facebook campaign as well at WNR vets. Well guys, um, this was super cool to learn about and um, you know, we'll do our best to, to push out information on the event and help you guys um, get it promoted and funded and all that stuff. And um, I think it's going to be a blast and thank you guys for, for honoring the greatest generation. Um, they, they truly are in my opinion, the greatest generation from our country. And and I thank you guys for honoring them and, um, and doing the events and stuff that you do. So, um, thank you so much guys. We will, um, we'll look forward to, uh, connecting again and maybe hearing a little bit more about the event. Well, I'm sure we're going to have GoPro videos to show you and uh, other things, uh, but uh, absolutely. Thanks for having us. And, uh, um, you know, again, we, we do it because of them, you know, we honor those that went before. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you very much, Jason. It's definitely been a pleasure talking to you. And, uh, you know, we, we love to brag about what it is that we do. And uh, and not so much that we're bragging about ourselves. We're bragging about how we honor the veterans that came before us. Dave, Ken, thank you guys so much. It's a pleasure. Pleasure's all here, my friend. Thank you. Take care. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of the Armed and Ready podcast. If you have any questions or about the episode you just saw, you can reach out to me at valoneguy.us.